This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Sony ZV-1. Yo, is this thing on? ZV-1, what does that mean? The Vlogger 1. I tell you what it doesn't mean. Wow, this feels great. Look how tiny this is. All right, I'm impressed. Sony ZV-1, a full-on vlogging camera. It's the same size as the Sony RX100 series. Internal ND, blazing fast autofocus, 24 to 70 zoom camera with a f1.8 to 2.8 for 800 bucks, and it fits in your pocket. There's gonna be plenty of room in my pocket because there ain't no money in there. So it's definitely the same size as the Sony RX100 Mark 7 and the same sensor. One inch Exmor RS, CMOS sensor, 20.1 megapixels. Now these are stack sensors optimized for higher frame frame rates and face detection autofocus, which also means, <laughs> wow, 85 raw images. This is the same blazing fast autofocus that we have in the A9. So it can shoot 20 frames per second in raw or JPEG. You can get like 80 something raw or 177 JPEGs. Guys, that's like some burst lap stuff right there. So I think this is the same speed as the Sony RX100 Mark 7. I mean, this is a steal then for 800 bucks compared to the $1,200 that Sony has it listed on their website right now. What's the biggest difference? 315 phase detection auto points versus 357. 1200 versus 800, is it $400 better? I don't know. Okay, so let's talk body. It's the same size as its predecessors. Although there's a slight difference, there's now a new easy hand grip on the side, which actually makes it really easy to hold on to. But the biggest one is the new 180 degree flip screen. I mean, come on, Sony. About time. 180 degrees and it even folds back onto itself. So if you wanna stick it in your pocket and protect the screen, done. Down at the bottom, we have the same battery and memory card slot as its predecessors, so that's no change. Although, you are gonna need a fast write speed card if you wanna do those photo bursts. There's no viewfinder though, because I really wanted to go like this. 3.5 millimeter mic jack, as well as an HDMI and a micro USB. So I really do like the menu setup. I like how it's carried over from the bigger cameras that I'm used to, like the a7 III. So you can do S-Log2, Hybrid Log Gamma, or if you want a custom low light picture profile too, that is in here. You guys want me to do a video on how to set this up? Because I did one for the a7 III, but there are definitely some functions in here that I would modify. Let me know in the comments below. Also super useful is the vlogger kit. To be honest with you, this I would probably pass on this, but now I like it. I've tried it out and it's so functional. It's Bluetooth connected. You can even control the zoom on here. I wonder how far away it works. <laughs> For sure, this is now my ceiling mount cam. You know, the flip screen is such a win. Hopefully gonna implement it on their bigger cameras moving forward. <coughs> I don't know, maybe in, in another decade when that comes out. I do like the color and the clarity. Whatever they're doing with the color science is working. It has me tempted to make my own color grades off of this for S-Log2. So if that's something you guys wanna see. He did a shameless plug, the old boy, my color grade maneuver and the crack all fucking wild. All right, let's dive into the frame rate. So it's the same exact as before. You have 4K 30 or you can do 1080 60 or 120 and even a whopping 960 at 720. I don't know if that's gonna be usable, but uh, I mean, that's super fun to have. The 4K looks good. It, it does not really look like a camera that's this size. All right, so let's see what this image looks like. I mean, with good lighting, this thing looks great. Uh, I'm super impressed with the 4K. 24 millimeters is probably wide enough. I mean, I normally like to be like this so that the audio is really good, but the audio sounds great. Although I will warn you, if you have it on active mode for the optical and electronic stabilization, it's gonna crop in quite a bit. So you'll really get about 28 millimeters and the 120 is absolutely usable especially when you were zoomed in at 70. Oh. 
which I find is kind of like the equalizer in terms of like bit rate and compression. If you're on a longer lens, you tend to get a little bit more leeway. So 120 at 70, looks amazing and then of course you got 960 frames per second which is just a ridiculous amount of frames like nothing would ever look amazing at that frame rate you should not use it at all i mean we're definitely getting a bump in the autofocus but now it's got eye tracking there's definitely a lot less breathing that's happening when that's on compared to some of my other cameras all right, so what else did they change? They did improve color skin accuracy. So now you have a little bit more pleasing skin tones. Sometimes on these smaller cameras, they tend to oversaturate things. And I think Sony is now trying to address that. And it doesn't look like it's, you know, a GoPro or something. It, it looks like skin should look. Now this is where Sony's getting really creative. They put in a defocus button, which you can assign to any of these customizable buttons. And at one push, it can change your aperture from whatever it was before down to 1.8 and automatically expose for your face. I don't know how I'm gonna use that, but I could probably come up with a couple of ways. Now, because of this mode and because of the phase detection sensor inside, Sony also beefed up their metering modes. So you get more accurate metering and now you have a face recognition metering mode. Instead of metering from the center or zone or totality of the image, it'll now use your face tracking, which is super rad for vloggers. This is basically for all documentary filmmakers. Like this is a really, really, key component. You're going in and out of bright scenarios. You want to make sure that the metering is done on your face and not the environment. It's like one of those things that they should have had in there years ago. So they put steady shot optical and electronic stabilization in here. Now this isn't apples to apples comparison because after all, this is a 24 to 200 versus the 24 to 70. And there's more room in here for stabilization and now even an ND. What camera do you know has internal ND? Oh, they had it on the Mark IV? Oh, that's that's brilliant. They took it away on the Mark VI? That's so stupid. Internal ND, you get about three and a third stops, if my math is correct. That's super helpful for obviously bright exposures and shooting more things in F1.8. You don't have to crank up that shutter speed so high now. A few of the cons. So the metering mode is definitely working, but if you're not on the right mode, there's a lot of shifting, especially if it's not finding a face. If you're filming other subjects like a puppy or something, you're gonna get some weird stuff as it's really trying to hunt for that right exposure. Battery life is another con. I mean, to be expected, you can't beat the laws of physics. You have a camera this size and a battery this size. Testing this out, I got a little bit over an hour of constant use. We're talking constant 4K or 120. I'm not really surprised, especially for a brand new battery. These are only gonna degrade over time, so you definitely wanna pick up a couple of them. My advice would be grab battery bank like this. This is 4,000 milliamps. You just charge this in your pocket as you go. Epidemic sound, that's where I get all my music from. Unbelievable, he did it again. Another shameless plug. I do like the audio. I think it's they did a really good job of rejecting ambient noise. And the voice is clear, almost a little too clear. Let's see how good this camera is. Can you actually make money with this camera? Is this good enough for... Okay. All right, you guys remember Anamorphia? Do you guys ever see that? All right, so this is such a good story. When Anamorphia came out in the height of COVID, I had a last minute brand deal set up with Anamorphia and I sent it to the brand and they, they backed out. And I don't blame them because of just the context of it, but they totally backed out. And if you've seen Anamorphia, you know that I made that plug an integral part of the story. So it wasn't as simple as me just removing the brand's name. I was like totally perplexed. I didn't know what to do. So instead of removing the brand and having this empty hole, I decided to create a fictitious brand, one that sounded very similar. And that's where Story Balls came from. Substituting Story Balls stock footage. Night vision mode engaged. Infrared, 82. Story Balls is the best deal for stock footage with an unlimited download plan. Check this out. In a half an hour, I had a logo and a website online 
from Squarespace. Somebody give me a popcorn and a wiener. Just when you thought it couldn't be done, he got us with the three peaks. Squarespace makes it so easy. They have templates already set up. It's drag and drop up online and going. I normally only do brand deals for brands that I actually believe in and think that they bring value to their customers. So if you go to Squarespace right now, you get 10% off of a year and just use my link down below. The funny thing is that you can hear the zoom when you're recording. Like it's not surprising, but I wasn't expecting it. I do like the buttons on top. They do give you an extra little C1 customizable button here, as well as a mode button. I could have used a couple in the front though. I feel like this is a missed opportunity. You know, if you have the camera here and you're not buying one of these, there should be a button on here, you know, maybe ND or um, the defocus or something. As of now, you have to reach around and line up your finger or, you know, you only get one, you get that top one right there. You know like one extra button on there would have been nice i definitely would have used it the good thing is that if you are using the handle you get one on the handle so that's a huge win that just i mean i am totally sold on this thing i could mount this and then do power zooms damn who doesn't want to see that Anyway, I'm super excited to try this out for a few more days and do like a proper vlog, like Casey Neistat style vlog, even though I don't do that. As of right now, this is like the perfect side piece for me to carry something that can fit in my pocket and, you know, have some crazy awesome horsepower. At the end of the day, this is all about does this camera help tell my story better? All right, guys, that's all I got today. Super quick episode, my first kind of product review where I don't go out and break something. And 60 frames per second on an $800 camera. You want more? I'll see you later. Listen, mm, you did great, you did great. This is not a criticism, but you rushed it a little bit, okay? I can't set focus when it's at 960. So I have to lock focus and you gotta hit your mark. One more time.